So the pandemic has actually been quite a gift to me. Um, at first we didn't know if there'd be shows and it was kind of scary because that was one thing that like I strive on and what my business drives on is having shows to advertise my genetics at. But then there was shows and I found that not having to go to school and being here on the daily, I could get my animals out 10 times better than what, they, than what I could last year. And so I'm doing school on, all online and I'm here every single day at the farm and so I'm getting my animals out to the best that they can be because I, I can be here with them a lot more. And I, I know the pandemic has hurt a lot, but for me it, it, it's been a gift, honestly. Hi, my name is Dakota Brown. I'm the owner of Red Hot Genetics. Um, welcome to Ocean View Genetics. I'm also the assistant herdsman at Ocean View Genetics. Um, this is my cow, Paris. Uh, this was my first purchase about four years ago, and she is the foundation of Red Hot Genetics. A little bit of what I do is buy and sell animals for mainly the show industry. And the show industry is showing cows off, basically like a big old beauty contest, and you want the perfect cow. And the perfect cow is going to take you to the winner's circle and that's where I make my money is in the winner's circle. With these cows, basically I, I buy one and she was my first purchase and I did not have a ton of money. She was three grand and I bought her and then I had to breed from her. She wasn't the perfect cow but I knew that she had potential in her offspring and so with her offspring I, I saw what was wrong with her and then I took her offspring and I bred it to a different bull, and so a different father, and then I, I changed what she needed, her legs changed. And so with her, with the next generation, I knew that I needed to change the legs, and so I found a bull who had better legs. So on the daily, I'm watching these girls to make sure that they're not sick. Keeping them healthy and happy is very, very important because just like a sports player, if they get sick or if they get hurt, they're gonna get set back. So like when I, when I was wrestling and, and I had a broken hand, it sent me back because I was not able to like be in practice and work like the other kids did. And so that sent me back. And so if these girls get sick, they're, they're not getting the gains that they need. So they're not, getting the, they're not eating as much. They're not getting the protein that they need. And so they're going to be smaller. And so by me watching them every day and making sure that they're happy and healthy and not stressed, it's, it's going to be in their best benefit and in my best benefit because they're going to look the best that they can. So a little bit of the daily basis is taking care of these cows and what I do as, the her as one of the herdsmen here is making sure that these cows are healthy every single day and clean, healthy, and, and so they can produce a good quality milk. Back here we have our baby calves and then also our show heifers. So these heifers are on a special program that they're gonna be going to a show. We pick them from the other heifers on the farm because of the qualities that we see in them. And so these heifers are gonna have bigger rib, better legs, longer head and necks, and they're all, they're all in different age groups. So this bigger one, and she's a summer yearling, so she was born last year in the summer. And this other one is a fall calf, so she was born last September. And then this one over here is a fall calf as well. And then this is actually my newest purchase. Um, and with the money that I got from the babies from the other cow, I was able to purchase her, and she's, she's basically an upgrade. Um, she, she's a little bit more expensive, but she, she's got better everything, better legs, better rump, better head and neck, and so she's, hopefully she'll take me to the next level of winning. 
and my market is in winning. So when I was eight years old, I, uh, my dad started helping out a guy out in Brooklyn, Wisconsin, who had a dairy farm. And then I uh, decided that I wanted to go out there, and I fell in love with cows, and I just had a passion for it. Um, after that, I started to get into showing. I went to the Dane County Fair, and my first time ever at the Dane County Fair, I stood dead last. I, it, was, it was painful. And obviously, I, I really didn't want to do much after that because I didn't see any potential in it. But I did continue on, and we, it, was, it was a journey of being in last, and I hated that feeling. And so I wanted to get better. And so I started learning, and actually, I, I, I wasn't paid for the first three or four years of my time, but I... Uh, wanted to learn how to do it and how to do it right and so once I got that down then I was able to get paid and that's how I earned my three thousand dollars to uh, get my first cow which ended up being the mother of the All-American. One thing that I've learned being at Ocean View is everything's got to be quality and hard work and hard work and quality work is really what goes into it and if, if you don't have that hard work ethic and good quality work ethic and good quality work you're not going to be the best and you're not going to win and without being the best or without having good genetics and good quality animals you're not going to make money and so it's very important that we on the daily have that quality work ethic that we do in a show you're going to have them on a halter and present them in the best way that you can and so it's really important that you get them used to the halter and so, being with them every day, I'm, I'm in here every day and walking them. And actually, I, um, part of my daily procedure is taking them out, washing them, um, and then also blowing them out so there's no dirt in their hair or anything. And you want a cow to have really good hair to make them look straight over the top. And actually, she... She's a very, very good cow. Like this, she's got very minimal hair. And so she's very straight over the top. Like you, you don't see a lot like this. So next we're gonna talk about her udder potential. And this heifer has great udder potential. She's got smaller teats. And so you don't want her teats to be too uh, big. And then she's got great width and height to her udder. And she's, she's just a baby. She's gonna calve probably in a year here. And so with, with these folds that you can see in here, obviously it's not just flat, but with these folds, it's gonna show that they have a potential to have a great rear udder that's gonna be wide. And then it also goes very high for a heifer. And so there's great udder potential there. So my company is Red High Genetics. Um, it started back in 2018 when my first offspring of the cow that I bought four years ago was born. And so when I bought this cow, I bred her to a bull. And then when that baby was born, it technically has my prefix, so I bred her. And so with the prefix, you have to find a name, and my prefix was red hot. And it started out kind of as a joke because I have red hair, and it was just kind of like going to be while I'm still a junior. I can be a junior until I'm 21. and so. And then after that, I was going to change it. And then she had her next baby, and it still carried the same prefix, red hot. And that baby ended up going on to be one of the, one of the best spring calves in the nation. She, she was undefeated in 2020, and unfortunately, uh, she got beat in the All-American contest. And so she was reserve All-American, but to be the second best heifer in the nation is just incredible. So what the judges are looking for at a show is the best animal in the class. And what makes the best animal in the class is their bone structure, their hair quality, their, their coat quality, their dairy character, and everything about that. And their breed character, because there's different breeds. We have the Holsteins and we have the Jerseys. And there's actually seven different breeds of dairy cows. And they all have different characters to them. And so. The best animal in the class is going to have, she's going to be long from end to end. She's going to have strength. She's going to have quality to her. 
She's gonna be she's gonna be the widest all throughout. She's gonna be the longest all throughout. She's gonna have the best legs with the best set to them. And she's gonna be the not necessarily the thinnest, but she's gonna be in the best condition for the class. And so whichever one is in the best condition for that class is going to be the winner. So a quote that I really live by is make it, make it win, and then sell it. And that, that sums up my business in a nutshell. And so when I make an animal, I'm going to make it from the mother and the father and have an offspring. And then I have to develop that animal. It's really from day one to whenever I sell her is I'm developing that animal and making sure that she's the best that there is. And so if, if I'm not watching them and developing them every day, there's somebody out there who's going to be working harder. And I want to be that person to win because that's where my market is. Unfortunately, in the dairy industry, um, just by having good genetics and everything, you can't make a living off of it. Like, people don't want the good genetics and the good cows who sit in a barn every day. They want, in my industry, they want the cows who are winning. And so that's... That's where I have to focus myself is on winning. And so making, making the good genetics and then making the good animals on the daily. And then after that, I'm able to sell them for a good profit. But my whole goal is to produce a quality animal. And I think that'll be my goal throughout my whole life. So the next national or Midwest show that is coming up here at the end of April. So I'm excited for it. I'm ready for it when that means that I gotta go back to work. Thanks for watching.